Up until this year, I was seriously bored of the iPhone. But then this little device came along and changed everything. In fact, the iPhone 13 mini might be my favorite Apple device of 2021. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed the button is just down there. Last year when I reviewed the iPhone 12 Pro I suggested that we'd reached peak iPhone. I still think we have. They're just rectangular slabs of glass and metal with amazingly powerful computers inside, incredible cameras, beautiful screens, amazing software. And that's about it. That doesn't make them terrible devices. By all accounts, they are just incredible feats of engineering. They're just a bit boring. And as far as the iPhone's concerned, it reached the top of its game, I think, two or three years ago. It therefore needed something pretty special to get me excited about iPhones again this year. But that's exactly what happened with the iPhone 13 mini, and today I'm gonna to explain why. I'm gonna start with the battery because I know that the iPhone mini series, since the iPhone 12 mini, the biggest concern people have had has been about the battery in this thing. Now I never had an iPhone 12 mini, but pretty much all of the reports and reviews suggested that the battery was pretty much subpar. Now with the iPhone 13 mini, I want to completely get rid of any concerns that you might have about the battery straight away, straight off the bat. There's nothing to worry about. It's a really good battery. In fact, the only time I've had any problems with it is in this studio when I was first moving in and for about two weeks, I didn't have proper Wi-Fi here. So I was relying on a 4G connection, which in this building is pretty terrible. And that meant this phone was spending most of its day trying to find a 4G signal, which is a complete battery killer. All sorted now, got Wi-Fi here, and it's back to normal. And normal for the iPhone 13 mini battery, for me anyway, means I end the day with about 20 to 30% left. That's absolutely fine, great even. What do I do with it? I use it as a phone, really, not to make many calls to be fair, but I use it for checking email, checking social media, taking photos, listen to music, listen to podcasts, all the normal stuff you do with a smartphone, I do with this. I pick it up throughout the day. I'm always checking, for example, my stats on YouTube and Medium and stuff, so it gets an awful lot of use, but I get to the end of the day and it's got 20 to 30% battery left. Now, regular viewers will know that when I first reviewed this, I mentioned that one of the first things I was gonna do with it was take it for a night hike up Snowdon in North Wales. And the results were really interesting. So this was a night hike, but we left basically about midday on the Saturday. And so at 12.30 on the Saturday, the iPhone 13 mini came off its charger, had 100% charge, and immediately I put it into battery saving mode or low power mode, whatever they call it. I always do that if I'm gonna be away from a charge for a long time, simply because I've just always done it. So this is standard practice for me on long days or nights out. So 12.30 p.m. on the Saturday, 100% charge, into low power mode, and off we went to North Wales. Basically, to cut a very long story short, by 5.43 a.m. on the Sunday morning, this phone still had 29% battery left. And bear in mind, it had been on since 12.30 p.m. the day before. I'd taken lots of photos with it. I'd used it quite a bit. There was no Wi-Fi anywhere, so it was hunting for signal. Yes, it was in low power mode, but I don't think that's bad performance whatsoever, given the conditions. So as mentioned, I never experienced the iPhone 12 mini's battery issues, but if you're worried about the same thing happening with the 13 mini, don't be. My experience with this phone, and not just mine actually, other people I've spoken to on my Discord server, comments I've seen on this YouTube channel, they all seem to be saying the same thing, which is the battery is absolutely fine. Don't sweat it. Now the other reason that I love this iPhone 13 mini is because it appears to be a very tough little phone. Quick caveat, I'm not suggesting that you mistreat your phone or be, you know, kind of careless with it at all because they're still made of glass and stuff that breaks. But I've had two instances with this where it has survived fairly significant drops, completely unscathed. Now the first incident happened on a treadmill where I'd basically put my iPhone on the little ledge thing on the treadmill and put a towel over it or around it and completely forgot it was there. Did my run, came off the treadmill, had some water, came back onto the treadmill, grabbed the towel and pulled the iPhone off with it. The iPhone fell off bottom first on the treadmill surface. Not an ounce of damage, no broken screen, nothing. The second incident happened in the toilet. So bear with me, it's not, it's not disgusting, don't worry. Not really. Basically, I walked into, into the bathroom, I placed the phone on the top of the towel rail, which looks quite safe because it kind of angles the phone down against the wall. So I left it there and then for some reason turned around and batted the phone off the towel rail. It flew up. All this happened in slow motion. It was horrendous. Flew into the air, fell down, bounced off the rim of the toilet, bounced up again and ended up, yeah, in the toilet, head first, upside down 
like that sticking out. The toilet was completely clean. The only thing down there was toilet paper. This is way too much information, but it's important because, again, it was completely unscathed. No dents, no scratches on the screen. A bit wet, obviously, but these are waterproof, so it doesn't matter. Now, again, I may just have been extremely lucky with these two incidents. It may just have hit at the right point not to cause any damage. But with each release of the iPhone, Apple does keep making notes about how toughened the glass is and how much of a sturdier piece of tech it is. I've never had a phone in the past where I've dropped it that badly before and there hasn't been some form of damage, so it's a tough little thing. Very quick note on the camera. I've always been a little bit cautious about iPhone cameras. They've not always been that fantastic. Quite often, they don't look too bad on the iPhone screen, but when you blow them up, because there's not a huge number of megapixels going on, they don't look that good. That's still the case. These don't have high megapixel counts, but they've done something with the iPhone 13 camera system, which has resulted in a camera that is just epic for still photos. I barely use it for video. I'm not really gonna talk about video in, the, in this video. The cinematic mode thing is really cool. It's a bit of a, it feels a bit beta-like at the moment. It needs a lot more refinement, but when it comes to still photography, this has absolutely blown me away, particularly during a recent trip to Canada where I took a few photos, which I'll put on the screen now. This one in particular was taken, I think at about 6 a.m. in the morning. I'd just been out for a run and I was about to cross the road. And I just spotted this quite interesting scene with all the reflections on the wet surface of the tarmac and the lights in the distance. I just very quickly got the phone out, snapped away, and that was it. The only thing I've done to this photo is straighten the horizon slightly. I've not done any other edits whatsoever, and it is easily one of the, my best photos I've ever taken. I'll put a few more on the screen now. I was just massively impressed with the photos this thing was able to push out. So again, whatever they've done with the camera system in this phone has reignited my love, I suppose, of smartphone photography. I realized something the other day, which was that I've not even thought about buying a case for this iPhone. And you've probably seen during this video with me waving it around, there's no case on it at all. It's completely naked. Now, I do normally put my phones in cases, but I don't really like doing that because you miss out on the whole industrial design. I like having the phone as it was intended, really. But for whatever reason, I've just not felt the need to do that, so I've left it naked. And I think there's a couple of really interesting reasons for that. One of them is the size. Now, I talked a lot about this in my review, so I won't ramble on about it too much now. Suffice to say, the size of this iPhone 13 mini is just perfect for me. It's not for everyone. A lot of people like the Pro and the Pro Max. I get that completely, but I'd had enough of big phones. And just the ability to hold this in one hand and still operate it without having to move my thumb around too much means that I just feel much more confident that I won't drop it. So having it naked doesn't feel like quite as much of a risk as it was with the 12 Pro. The other reason is this. This is the MagSafe wallet, which if you're not aware, attaches via magnets to the back of the iPhone. It's designed to hold two at a push three cards, which firstly is fantastic because it has completely got rid of my old fashioned wallet, which was always a bit of a pain. I was always misplacing it and it was always a bit bulky in my pocket. So to have only two cards that I can put into a wallet has really forced me to think about what cards I take out with me. And all I have in there is my gym card and a credit card, that's it. I use Apple Pay for everything these days, so I don't really need a proper wallet. The other reason this is so great is because once it's attached, it acts as a kind of case. Granted, it doesn't do anything to the sides of the phone or it doesn't protect the screen at all. It literally only covers this part here. But for me, that means I can happily place this on any surface like that without worrying about it. And it also adds a bit of girth or depth to the actual device, so it makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold and gives you a little bit more grip because of the, the leather surface on here. And yeah, without the MagSafe wallet, although, it, like I said before, it's very comfortable, there's still the option to, to lose grip of this because it's still quite a slippy phone. But this adds something to it. It makes it a little bit more bulky and just makes me feel much better about walking around with this. I was so surprised when this turned up and just how quickly I fell in love with it. It comes with me absolutely everywhere. It's always attached to this phone. And the other thing is with the size of the iPhone 13 mini, I think this is the best fit for these kind of MagSafe accessories. Because if you attach this to, for instance, the 13 Pro, it doesn't sit completely flush with the phone. Whereas on the iPhone 13 mini, you can probably see there, it fits square all the way around. There's no gaps apart from at the top, obviously. There's no gaps around here, and it just looks made for this phone. Honestly, this has completely knocked me back when it comes to how good a companion it is for the iPhone 13 mini. I think without that, I'd still love this phone, but it just completes it for me. 
So I promise I won't keep going on about the iPhone 13 mini. I think it's quite clear that I love this phone to bits, but it's because it's got me excited about iPhones again. And that needed to happen because I, as I said at the start of this video, my interest in iPhones and in smartphones in general really was starting to wane. Now, yes, as I've mentioned before, I'd love to see Apple do something slightly more interesting with the range and introduce a flip phone or just something that's a little bit more forward thinking and adventurous, but they're never gonna do that. This is Apple, Apple are not Samsung. My bigger concern really is that this could be the swan song for the iPhone mini. Now, if reports are to be believed, the iPhone 12 mini didn't sell very well at all. And the iPhone 13 mini by that point had gone into production, they couldn't really turn back. So they just went with it. That makes me really sad if that's the case. Loads of people have said to me, I love the size of this phone. They get it in the hands, they kind of turn it around, they play with the screen and they're always impressed. No one's looked at it and said, oh dear, that's way too small. My worry, is that it hasn't sold well, potentially, if that's the case, because people just don't think of going for it. People just go by default for the regular iPhone 13 or the Pro or the Pro Max. They don't really give this much thought. I just hope people have bought this. And I'd love to know, have you bought the iPhone 13 mini or have I convinced you to? Is it something you're gonna go and do next week? Get involved in the comments and let me know. Now, if you've still got some time and you wanna check out my full thoughts on the iPhone 13 mini, keep watching for a link to my full review of this phone. But until next time, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you next time.